if we can keep the gravy train going i'll be extremely happy it's wonderful it's got eight carriages it's got a buffet car and would you believe they're serving goals And welcome back to another episode of Outcast to Icons with me, someone cobbling together tiny amounts of money to try to put towards a coaching badge one day. Who knows? As always, if you're enjoying the series, drop a like, smash it for the algorithm. You know the drill. You've done a great job so far. Let's keep it going. Regan has recurring dreams of a guy named Kim in some sort of alternate universe. He doesn't know why, but he's thinking he may need to follow this manager wherever he goes. Regan, stick with me. We'll stay together. Trust me on this. And you will succeed, my friend. You will succeed. I just hope we end up going to a club next that has a transfer budget. Because that would suck if we didn't. That would really, really suck. In other quite strange news, our rep. I just randomly checked it when I was looking to see if we could do a coaching course. Haha, <laughs> coaching course. Whilst £2 million in debt. Who would think it? Uh, they said no, would you believe? However, I noticed that our rep had gone up to 25%. And I swear it was 20% before. So that's good. I don't know why it's gone up. Maybe it's from, like, I don't know, if there's some awards for, like, Manager of the Month or something. Although I haven't seen it personally, unless it just was that to begin with. But that's a good sign, even if we only gain that. But I think if we were to actually win the division and win promotion, I think we'd get another rep boost that might just be enough in order to allow us to get that slightly better job at a slightly more cushy club to just see where we could go. Because obviously, progress is still very important in this save. But i got to say, I'm having a bloody lovely time at Ermis, and I'm just enjoying this little tour of Europe, to be honest. We're in no hurry to succeed, although success is kind of fun too, you know? So today we play Sevda. Um, I mean, we've had a two week break now. Everybody is rested as can be, to be quite honest. Um, now we have sold, or rather not sold. Celios has gone out on loan to Doxa Dramas um, because he complained. He's gone out on loan. It's fine. So it was just one of those things that had to happen. I've managed to get rid of a couple of the bad eggs by doing that. So that has also kind of helped some of the squad morale in certain areas too. You can see that the morale around the actual team is very, very good right now, which is definitely going to help us. Hopefully, Christu can finally stop being a, a bit of a wallop as you can see, Christu, he reacted well to our last chat. It's finally, the tables have turned. We had a lovely little chat. I brought him into my office and made us some tea, got some biscuits out. He brought some of his prototype crisps from his new sponsorship. Sea salt and leek flavoured, he tells me. Um, I wouldn't know. I'm not a crisp sommelier, you know? But that's enough of that. We've got links all around the pitch here and they're all good. And this is extremely exciting. I, I just want to see if we can just keep the, keep, keep the gravy train going, right? If we can keep the gravy train going, I'll be extremely happy. It's wonderful. It's got eight carriages. It's got a buffet car. And would you believe they're serving goals? And if the gravy train breaks down, it's fine. All aboard the Bisto bus. We are now top of the form standings. That would make sense after winning five in a row. But we have to keep going. We're at home. They've scored a decent amount of goals. I think they're actually the second highest goal scoring team in the league this season. Uh, still a fair way behind us, but there's a fair gap between them and everybody else as well. We are in extremely good form. Everybody I'd want other than maybe David Dynamite is fresh and fit. And even without Dynamite, Bradley Locko has done a superb job coming in. Mendy's in here. Oh, dearie me. Oh, I was hoping he was offside. I think he's hoping he was offside there too, because that was a shocking finish and he probably should have done a lot better. But if anyone can get through this team, it's us. Stiliano, Victor, we just need to move that ball quicker and start dragging them around a little bit. Stiliano, back to Victor, because they've got so many bodies in the way. Sawless, Victor, Booty! What a save! Oh, lovely ball around the side for Regan Booty. Oh, and he's... Oh, that was a chance. Great little pick out. Booty looks like the most dangerous man on the pitch right now. Just in terms of some of the runs he's making. Goes back post with this here, and Sawless is over the bar as well! Well... Half time, 68% possession. They've had no shots. We have to, they are just going to sit here and wait for us to try and break them down. And we have to do it. So I think our plan is going to be work ball into the box, higher tempo. And this is usually what we do that tends to work in games like this when we're struggling to break a team down. Oh God. Although a set piece goal, oh, watch us lose 1-0 because of a corner goal. <laughs> It'll be their only shot of the game or something. Oh, please no. Come on, lads. Now's the time to be strong. Oh, wow. They very nearly did as well. Back for Loco again. He could just whip one, to be fair. Victor could pick up Booty here. He likes to. Mendy! Booty! Oh, my God. How on earth did the keeper keep that straight at him? Booty, again, ghosting into a wonderful position, but he could not find the back of the net. He's played so well today in terms of his position. It's like Gakwa's header is saved by Zarkov as well. It's the last thing we need. That's more like it. Fombatas out wide. He can deliver something special, perhaps. Booty, cutting through. Stiliano. Christo! Saved by the goalkeeper. Um, I'm amazed we haven't managed to score a goal yet today, but we, we've got to find something here. 
This is how you you win titles based on performances like this. It's just Mendy and he's saved again by the goalkeeper. Oh, if this goes top bins. Oh, Dubniak actually with a good save down low. First we've seen out of Pesevda for a while. For Stiliano again. The pressure's coming on once more. Fombatas. Can he get that back post ball and maybe from someone like Miera? And it's all the way through, but Christou's got two players with him. He's dragging people out there. And it's a good ball in. And Adam Brooks on the end of it this time with the shot. So much space in this team to just provide... We haven't exactly struggled to break them down. We've actually had chances here. A lot of them, in fact. Mendy. Fombatas. Mendy again. For Victor now. Brooks can turn. Victor can shoot. Comes back to him again. And it's just wide. Um... I don't even know how we've managed to not score a goal in this game. Unless... And, uh, I play that a hundred times and we win almost every time, surely. I can't believe we've managed to not score in that match. Their goalkeeper made 15 saves. Apparently somehow only 14 saves according to the game, but we had 15 shots on target. So I'm guessing... I, I don't even know. Victor completed 116 passes in this match. 116 passes. Um... You might never see anything like that again in this save. That is outrageousness. Uh, what can you do, eh? I, I don't know what more we could have done in that match. Other than score. Maybe we could have scored. Hopefully this isn't the start of the uh, inertia coming back the other way. Right. Bigger chunk of games off camera. Back in a sec. Right then. We're back. We had Limpia at home. And, uh, well, it, it was a fairly straightforward affair for us on the end of things. Uh, Chris Du getting in there. I think that was his 10th goal of the season as well. So another player into double figures, which was very, very nice indeed. As the first half wore on, we just sort of were able to grind through. Control the play, play some nice stuff. Booty with a lovely ball around the side. And Chris Du again sweeping at home for his second goal of the night to make it 2 0. Relatively cushy at that point. And we were able to just sort of concentrate on trying to grab ourselves a couple more goals, boost that goal difference up, you know. Chris Du with the ball through. Mira getting on the end of it. Chris Christou was absolutely phenomenal. But this fourth goal, th the passing move, you, it will jump straight in. They'd already made about seven passes before this. But we were just dinking it around on the edge of their box. And eventually, the ball comes to Regan Booty, who pings it home to score. I think that was his 10th goal of the season. No, it was 11th, sorry. And it was 4-0 to Ermis. Pretty comfortable performance. We definitely could have conceded goals in this game, though. But Christou, two goals, two assists. What a man. Next up, it was at home to Ammonia in the derby. And it was just this goal. One goal in the 75th minute that separated us. And... You know, it was, one of the, it was very similar to the game against uh, Sevda, except this time we were able to break the deadlock quite simply. The same kind of system, but we managed to get a goal. Had to come from a set piece, but we take those. Good win. But unfortunately, we then encountered our worst performance of the season. Uh, goal from a corner here. Luis Inio with the little flick on header. But after that, we were just giving them goals. I, I can't explain this. Like, look how much space Agakwa has. And then he just lets Luzinho take it off of him. I mean, that almost looks like match fixing to me again. 2-0 uh, this time to Ian Appa, And then it just got worse for us. Ball was clipped over the top here. He has ample time to win this header. He doesn't. They don't win the next tackle. Slips in behind. And Luisinho, after half an hour, it was 3-0 to Ian Appa. And, and we just offered nothing in this game. Probably still could have got a goal in this one. But... It's just easily the worst performance of the entire season from us. Shocking. As next up, we hosted Derenea, a sort of in that sort of bottom group of teams this year. Uh, we did take the lead early on through Sawless, slamming a lovely one home off the cross from Fombatas to give us an early lead. And I thought, good, we're starting to work our way back into this. Uh, except, unfortunately, Derenea had other ideas, as on 13 minutes, they scored this absolute belter here from Svavos on the edge of the area. And just, I'm like, head and hands at this point and but then it got a little bit worse for us as just after half time another goal this time from a corner two players on him couldn't manage to stop it and it was 2-1 to Derenea at home but thank goodness 77th minute ball was whipped across here comes through and there was Sawless for his second goal of the night to bail us out and get us a two all draw um yeah I think we probably should have won but we didn't we just gave up soft goals we're, we're very good for the odd soft goal and then finally, we found ourselves away at the Xylophone people. 30 minutes into this game, lovely bit of work here. Christou just picks this up and ping. That might be goal of the season. Might even be better than the previous one he scored, that incredible volley. Uh, probably a bit fortunate to win this, as after that, we kind of just tailed off a little bit and they really grew in the second half. But we got out there with the win. So again, as always, swings and roundabouts and all that jazz. And that leaves us two points clear of Paralimni at the top of the league. Obviously, the goal difference is still amazing compared to the others. But Ammonia Pstevda actually have a pretty good one. They just haven't been able to string enough wins together, really. That's been the difference between preventing them from getting involved in the title race, which technically they're not out of yet, but they basically are. Uh, so we're four points clear of Kami Atissa right now. And if we beat them today, we officially knock them out of the title race and guarantee ourselves a spot in, at the very least, that second place, which I believe is a playoff game. So a win for us today at home against Kami Atissa could be enormous. Now, on your screen, you should be seeing the youth intake. I wasn't expecting much, but I'll be honest, the best player in the youth and tape, which I'm going to show you now, he's not bad. As young players go, like nearly five-star potential, not quite, although originally when he came through it was four, so I'm not 
you know, not disappointed in that kind of quality. And now, a total tangent, but I had to show you this, essentially. So, I saw a news article a few weeks ago, well, quite a few weeks ago, actually, about Hetafe extending their long unbeaten run, and I thought, well, that's pretty good. They must have been relegated in order to be doing that, and, and they were. And then, a couple of weeks ago, I saw another news article saying that they'd sacked their manager, and I'm like, what? How does that work? Well, let me tell you a story. So, this is the second tier in Spain, uh, the second tier which, as you can see, Hetafe are top of. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> they were, I believe, 10 points clear of dropping out here. They've they've drawn their first game with the new manager in charge, I believe. So, uh, I, I, I just can't explain it. Looking at their schedule, they started off and didn't lose a single league game until they lost to uh, Fuenlabrada in the, on the 24th of January was their first league defeat. And even since then, yeah, they lost back-to-back -to, -back to Real Sporting and then Malaga here, but they still picked up a few more victories, another defeat there to Leganes. And it was at this point when they lost to Barcelona B, I think, that the manager was sacked. Um, and I have checked, he was sacked. You can see here, Roberto Moreno was the manager, sacked. Imagine sacking your manager when you'd gone on, I think, 23-game unbeaten run and were 10 points clear at the top of the league looking for promotion. What? On, I know that, I mean, they've obviously got relegated with him in charge, but, like, are they mad? Getafe, maybe we want to avoid them if they're going to start treating their managers like this. I can't explain it. But we must move on from that. It's Kami Atissa today. Uh, we put Hatafe out of our minds for a little bit. They obviously want to do loads of changes. I obviously want us not to. Chris Du picked up a slight knock. Is he fit to play? The last thing we... Because remember what happened last time we lost him for a long period of time. I'd much rather have him out for one game than risk losing him for the rest of the season because that could be catastrophic for us. Uh, David Dynamite is back and fit. So welcome back, David, to the team because I'd rather risk him for 15 minutes if we had to than start him and risk him for 75 minutes and that actually could make a big difference. Usually my logic would be if they're good enough to be... If they're fit enough to be on the bench, they're fit enough to start. But at the very least, I'll please the Olympiacos manager who was once again on my back about not playing Solis in the correct position. Uh, he didn't like the fact that I was playing him as an inside forward. Well, yeah, no. Uh, imagine if you recalled him now. A win, if we beat Kami Atissa, it makes things a lot more simple for us. We just have to outperform Paralimni for the remaining two games of the season. One of which is at home against Peck, and the other one is away at the bottom club on the final day of the year. If we get, if we come into that final day of the season, top of the league, then I really do think we have to, there will be no excuse then for not winning the league. Because we're away at the bottom club, we already hammered them 5-1 this season in a performance that wasn't even that good. So that's why today needs to be a massive performance. We don't want to throw this away like we did last year. Uh, not that it cost us too much in the end, but it was still disappointing to see the team not turn up in quite such dramatic fashion uh, towards the end of last season. He'll get a chance to out wide. I find that Mira is better out wide than Sawless. He doesn't make so many inward runs. Victor, edge of the box for David. Dynamite, imagine if he scored. Ah, uh, okay, David. That was a decision. That was definitely a decision. Sawless. Tight angle, though. He's got runners behind him. Finds Fombatas. Oh, what a strike. Remy Fombatas does it again. Ermis won. Kami Otisa nil. Very, very early in this game. But we only beat them 1-0 earlier this season. I'm going to pretend that that random back pass was a thing of genius, to be honest. Nice work from Sawless. They don't track the run of Fombatas. He's completely open here. The goalkeeper's unsighted by the defender. And Fombatas slams home his fifth goal of the season. He's really been good in the second half of the year. Great start. If everything stayed exactly as we are, we'd actually be four points clear going into those final two games. No! Wow, that should have been a goal. And in the worst news here, uh, Paralimni are playing at home to the bottom club today, uh, meaning that it's very unlikely that they're actually going to let points slip away from them in that match. Well, much like the game against them earlier this season, it's been a very, very cagey game. We've got the ball and we have the lead which actually kind of matters the most for me right now with the fact that we're keeping a lot of possession, but we're actually having something to hang on to here. They have to come at us, but they've proven that they can create. And incredibly, elsewhere, it is actually still nil-nil between Paralimni and Degenis. Although I wouldn't be surprised if they just go and win 4-0 in the second half. They're very good at doing that. And it seems that Degenis are very good at collapsing. In fact, they've literally just scored right before halftime. So we didn't even see that. So Mikado gives them the lead. So the pressure is back on us in some ways. As Oh, I thought we were going to get a chance there. Fombatas again. Pulls at the edge of the box for Victor. Oh, what a goal. Victor makes it 2-0. Ermis 2. Kami it is a nil. I don't think we've thrown away a two-goal lead at any point this season. I've now jinxed it inevitably, but great work again. Fombatas picks up yet another assist for the season. I thought this chance had gone. It wasn't even a good cross. That's so difficult for Victor to hit that on the up bounce there, but he's got it into the bottom corner. A rare goal for Victor, and we're 2-0 up. Come on! Uh, Degenis have equalised, incredibly. We could be in for a massive windfall today if this continues the way it's looking. We'd be four points clear. Third goal, though, would make me feel a lot more comfortable. Confident? That is not a word, Matt. That's how confident I am about the word. Uh, oh, what a ball for Fombatas. Lots of space this time, actually. Slips around the side for Regan Booty, and surely that was offside. No! Wow! 
a late goal for Degenis could basically, I mean, to be fair, four points and five points actually isn't that much difference as far as what it would require from us in the remaining games, particularly because of our goal difference. Oh, that's not a good pass. We got away with that there. The pass was good, brother. The, the tackling defensive wasn't. As far as I know, it is still 1-1 in the other match, which is just, I mean, imagine being handed it almost because of that. That, that would be incredible news. Oh, <laughs> Armis 2, Kamiya Tissa 0. Looks like it's going to be the final score here, but that's not the big story, really. The big story as we go to full time is the fact that Paralimni, the biggest rivals to us, have looked like they've dropped points at home. Oh, okay. Have dropped points at home against the bottom club. We must make this... Wait, hang on. Has it? I swear it was a... Pl is this a case of where the game doesn't really know what it wants anymore? Because I'm pretty certain... I thought, anyway, that there was a playoff match, right? Am I completely wrong? I'm already about to be promoted. For some reason, I'd convinced myself that there was a playoff game. I still think there might be. I I'm not sure about that, but let's just see. Okay, apparently there is no... Pro there th we just promoted... <laughs> that must be the most anticlimactic promotion ever, where I didn't realise that we could get promoted today. <laughs> that might be the most me thing we've had this entire time. They're pleased with me. Yeah, I bet they are. Booty's happy the promise was kept. Did I say that? Oh, just as well. We did get promoted, didn't it? Christ. Yeah, I'm an idiot. It's just straight promotion. I don't know where I got that idea from. I have no idea where I got that idea from. I think I'm still thinking about the uh, the Macedonian League or North Macedonian League. We're promoted. We've got Ermis promoted today with that victory. Go on, lads. Fombatas with 18 league assists. That is mental. Wow. Okay, well, I guess that leaves the title races still up for grabs, though. We could still win this league. I don't know if that's going to give us any kind of rep boost yet until such time as we may or may not win the title, but we can see. Nope, we haven't gained any rep yet, but I suspect that we will hopefully gain some rep at that title. Let's try and do a coaching course now, just to see if they'll do that because of the fact that we're title winners now. Maybe, nearly, I don't know. Not title winners, technically. Should be, though. Ah, they've rejected it. If they'd have said yes, then I might have been tempted, but there we go. So, that leaves tomorrow's video with the final two games of the season to win this title. Now, we could technically do it in the first one, but I don't know. We've been handed a good position here. Now, obviously, tomorrow we'll also go look at things like the Leicester as well, because I have a sneaky suspicion they're doing quite well to do with that, and we'll make decisions about our future at that point. So, if you've enjoyed this, I, that's very unexpected. Uh, drop a like on the video. That would be superb. If you're new to the channel, subscribe too. That'd be awesome. I stream on Twitch Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. So go follow there too, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Hold your gun. Capybara. Bye-bye.